Henry David Thoreau once said, if one advances confidently in the direction of his dream, he will meet with success unexpectedly in common hours. Here are a few questions to consider towards reaching your dream and painting your own personal portrait of success. You know, what makes a world champion? What separates good from great? Why do some people become world-class while others, despite their best effort, never rise above mediocrity? You know, people that rise to the level of mediocrity often end up there because they have no dream. In their mind's eye, they have no portion of success. They have not developed the framework within which to fully examine their potential. There's no fire in their belly, no dream. And if you notice this, they'll let the littlest things shut them down, like doubt. You know, we don't become world-class if we're full of self-doubt. Rather, if we have a portrait of success firmly embedded in our brain, whatever we set our mind to, despite the naysayers, and when you go through life and you're there everywhere, we still achieve our dreams. And of course, tonight I know I'm speaking to the choir because you are MIT students. And I have only three things to say to you. Congratulations for what you've done, for what you're doing, and what you're going to do. Now, as I said, I'm kind of an oddball, an odd duck. I wanted to be a card mechanic. And let me explain something. The general public don't realize there's a distinction. There's a big difference between a card mechanic and a card magician. A card mechanic is someone who can control the outcome of a card game. And the techniques for the card table are literally a 1,000 times more difficult to develop than the techniques used to perform card magic. And I've been uh, very fortunate that I've had the privilege of working with some of the most respected people in the areas I was interested. When I, in 1975, I had the privilege of starting to train with a man named Professor Di Vernon. He was born in 1894. He lived to be over 98 years old. And for over half a century, he was considered the best in the world with a deck of cards. He was also known as the man who fooled Houdini. And that took place back in 1919, almost a century ago. And I had the privilege of working with Professor Vernon for 17 years. And during those years, Professor would describe to me very intricate card concepts and card moves. And the thing is, he didn't describe them to me in the way that he could do them or the way that others could do them. But because I couldn't see what he was showing me, he tricked me. He described them to me in the way he wished they could be done. And only after I spent thousands of hours and mastered the moves and concepts did he finally admit to me he made them up. He thought they were impossible. He just wanted to see what I'd come up with. 